it's Red Eye Radio, with talk about everything from politics to social issues and news of the day. Whether you're up late or just starting your day, welcome to the show from the Uniden America Studios. For Gary McNamara and Eric Harley, Chris Kroc, this is Red Eye Radio. I know that's a little bit of a That is some new footage. Uh, by eight seconds of screaming, he's got a gun. The guy was allowed to shoot and try to kill the president and kill one man and two others critically wounded. Here's more audio of the Democrats saying that Trump needs to be eliminated. But his rhetoric is really getting dangerous, more and more dangerous. And we saw what happened on January 6th when he uses inflammatory rhetoric now. And his recent true social post uh, is incredibly, incredibly scary for anyone uh, that might be trying to op- work in government. And um, it is just uh, uh, unquestionable at this point that that man cannot see public office again. He is not only unfit, he is destructive to our democracy, uh, and he has to be uh, he has to be eliminated. Congressman Dan Goldman. Now we have uh, former Democrat U.S. Senator Claire McCaskill from Missouri. A lot of people have tried to draw similarities between Mussolini and Hitler and the use of the terminology like vermin and the, the, the drive that those men had towards autocracy and, and dictatorship. The difference, though, I think makes Donald Trump even more dangerous, and that is he has no philosophy he believes in. He is not trying to expand the boundaries of the United States of America. He's not trying to overcome a neighboring country like Putin is in Ukraine. He is not going for some grandiose scheme of international dominance. All he wants is to look in the mirror and see a guy who's president. All he cares about is selfish self-promotion. That's the only philosophy he has, which makes him even more dangerous because he has actually said out loud that it would be okay to terminate the Constitution. Okay, uh, that is Claire McCaskill, former Democrat senator uh, from Missouri, and uh, she said that Trump is worse than Hitler and Mussolini. Well, if you are, what do you got to do to him? You got to assassinate him. Here is State Pla- Stacey Plaskett, Democrat delegate to the U.S. House, and uh, saying the president needs to be shot. Having Trump not only have had the codes, but now having the classified information for Americans and being able to put that out and share it in his resort with anyone and everyone who comes through should be terrifying to all Americans. Mm -hmm. And he needs to be shot, stopped. Shot stopped. Right. Gee, I wonder what that Freudian slip was about. Meantime, law enforcement experts raised questions over unsecured roof where gunmen fired a Trump rally. From fake news CNN. I'll give you some more details coming up in the next segment. Uh, uh, also, you uh, have this though. Fake news CNN does say 400 to 500 feet uh, on that rooftop with the perfect perch, uh, quoting one of the uh, uh, former retired uh, FBI agents that was in charge of snipers uh, and uh, such for years. Uh, there's th- there was a total lapse. It was uh, they missed over- overlooked this uh, basic simple. Uh, Shot from uh, a uh, nope. There should have been Secret Service on that roof, but I think that's what you're going to find out. Is this head of the uh, Secret Service, Kimberly Cheadle, used to be Joe Biden uh, protector in uh, when he was vice president? He, he hired DEI hires, and she said she was going to hire 30 percent of women uh, for the force, Secret Service. Again, that's the most important thing that they have a female organ. That's it, or or they're a man identifying with a female organ, even though they don't have one. That's more important than security. That's DEI. That's Joe Biden. All right. Uh, we go right to your call at 866-RED-EYE. It's Chris Kroc on a special live edition Sunday morning of the uh, assassination attempt of President Donald J. Trump filling in for Eric and Gary on Red Eye Radio. Let's now go to Virginia, Fredericksburg. Phil, you're on Red Eye Radio. Well, I'm glad that President Trump is okay, but that's a miracle because his Secret Service detail, his security's been awful for a long time. They just did a rally down in Virginia where he was at the side of the stage with no Secret Service around him for about five minutes 
wide open to anybody with a rifle. And when he went to the podium, there was no bulletproof glass in front of him. There was no bulletproof glass behind him. And, I mean, it's amazing to see the lack of protection to someone who's been so maligned for eight years. They have brainwashed people to hate this guy, and they have thousands of people trying to kill him. They've let Hamas into the country who's been recruiting American kids on colleges. God knows if a kid who's wearing a MAGA hat, if that's a a, a Hamas operative or not. So, I mean, the the Secret Service has to do a way better job of doing the basics, you know, put the bulletproof shields up, you know, cut down your perimeters, you know, so you can protect them. And don't have them out in the open so much. It's ridiculous what I saw. I could not believe it. You know, back in the in the seventies and eighties, you always had a triple of agents around everybody. You had two big agents on the side. You had an agent in the back. And if there was somebody who tried to attack the person being protected, the two agents in front would push the person behind them. The back agent would pull that person away. You had a triple of big guys who protected the person who who was the target, potentially a target. And you don't see that anymore. You didn't see that around Trump for months. It's ridiculous. I'm, I'm it's, a, it's almost it. like it's almost this man better. Yeah, it's almost like uh, it was uh, intentional. Um, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if they purposely have withdrawn their hand a little bit. If you're worse than Mussolini or Hitler, you got to be you got to be uh, taken out. That's just all there is to it. And the Democrats did this. Joe Biden did this. His administration did this. His Secret Service head did this. And they all need to have heads roll. Joe doesn't like to fire anybody, but Trump will, and he's going to be our next president. Uh, one, the current president has fallen several times because of his frailty and his incompetence and his mental um, mind being gone. Uh, but Trump fell today because one of Joe Biden's terrorists and supporters and sympathizers uh, shot, and, shot and tried to kill him. And there's a bullet hole if you look on my Twitter feed, at Chris Crock Show, C-H-R-I-S-K-R-O-K. And it's right in the one of his breast pockets. Uh, it looks like a bullet hole. I don't know for sure, but I believe that he took a, a bullet to the chest with his, uh, every uh, president when they speak has a bulletproof vest. I believe he was hit there. When you're hit there like that, it's like a sledgehammer. I'm quoting a cop who I interviewed who uh, sh- was shot in the chest at point blank range by one of the uh, thugs on the streets of Atlanta, and he returned fire and killed the guy, but he said it felt like a sledgehammer to the chest, and that, that was a young uh, officer in his probably mid to late 30s. When he came on my show after that happened uh, about 16 years ago. So I, I think he was also weakened from getting hit in the ch- a chest with like a sledgehammer. You know what I mean? That feeling. Uh, that's what I believe strongly. And I'm just so proud of him. And his instincts without thinking in a moment of, un- of total weakness said, I need to show them I'm strong. And he stood up and he yelled, pump those fists. And he yelled, fight, fight, fight. And that's a show of strength, which is incredibly missing in this administration let's now go to uh ralph in kenton ohio ralph you're on red eye radio hey chris how are you good brother go ahead when uh this dei uh front gets in front of congress her opening statement is going to include uh that this assassin was visually identified and a member of one of those teams, and cleared as a good guy, and that's how that that's how that person got there in chaos. That they saw him, they identified him as somebody identified him as a good guy, and they let him go. That's what that's what uh, they're that's what do you to think. That's what you think. Well, we I don't know that, but we don't. You never know. Um, I I wouldn't be surprised if stuff gets deleted and destroyed. But he was allowed to uh, carry a rifle and climb up a uh, the side of that building with a rifle, visible, unsheathed, not covered, uh, and then got on the top of the roof, was able to square up, uh, shoot, and be wonderfully accurate. And the president turned his head. This guy was two millimeters from killing our president. It was not an incident. It's Joe Biden and the Democrats uh, and his administration described it as. It was an assassination attempt, and the FBI officially said tonight— that uh, Trump did, in fact, survive an assassination attempt, period. That's what they're, they're using the language. It was clearly an assassination attempt, but the FBI finally admitted, I don't trust them a damn 
uh, iota to uh, investigate this at all. They cannot be trusted. Uh, I'll just throw out a million names. Elvis Chan. He's one of the stars who lied about uh, Trump and the FBI and should be fired and, and uh, frog marched out of there and p- put in jail. Um, not uh, the January 6th trespassers and grandmas. There are a handful of people who actually try to, to overthrow stuff, but they were unarmed. And uh, Joe says you need an F- F-15 to take out uh, and overthrow the country. But then he tells you that you can be unarmed and overthrow the country. It's an insurrection. Right. All right. You get me pretty good. Uh, try to take out uh, the general underneath Putin, and he uh, killed eight troops and knocked a helicopter out of the sky, shot a helicopter out of the sky, and shot a uh, an expensive new fighter jet out of the sky and uh, was leading uh, tanks and everything. And a ta- I don't know if it was tanks, but he was leaving, uh, leading deuces, deuce and a halfs, guns and everything, um, massive ones that can take out and shoot down a plane at a chopper. And he was 250 miles, uh, 156 miles uh, south of Moscow, and tanks were lined around Moscow to take him out if, as he approached. And that's an insurrection. Uh, Joe and the Democrats lie to you. They're liars. They should be truthful, but they don't want to be truthful because it won't help them win. But ironically, every time they do things to cheat, to steal, it ends up bouncing right back at them. Ron in St. Louis, where uh, that Claire McCaskill, who uh, says that uh, Trump's worse than Mussolini and Hitler— where she's from, Ron in St. Louis. You're live on Red Eye Radio. How you doing tonight? Uh, Good, sir. First of all, we kicked her to the side. She's a terrible senator. She's a joke. The whole Democratic Party is a joke. But what makes me mad is I talked to a couple of my friends in the retired Secret Service. They said, first of all, the son of a beehive would never have got up on the roof. He'd have been shot going up on the roof. And when somebody's yelling for three or four minutes. What were the police doing? Nothing. It was like it was like Pennsylvania said, "Okay, we'll help get rid of Trump for you." I mean, if people can't see what's going on, and that with the two levels of justice, and that today might have hopefully opened up their eyes, and thank God above that he looked out for this country today and protected the best president I've had in my 68 years of being alive, along with Reagan. But I'll tell you this. There's no way that that guy should have ever got nowhere near that rough. They they said when they used to when they used to go out they had to protect the president. Every manhole, every win, everything was done, locked up. Yes. Shut. Yeah, I have fr- was- I, I have people that are former counterintelligence and former, um, particularly irrelevant former um, federal protective service members, and those people uh, uh, buttress when the president or dignitaries come to town, and I've been told in 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 uh, depth how they do it and it's the manholes that clearing everything but the secret service chose to not cover that roof and that man was a perfect site three to four hundred feet sighted up perfectly was allowed to climb up there with a rifle and do the job um that maybe they wanted him to do i don't know but i'm i don't believe anything from joe biden's administration or any of the uh, uh, the people underneath it and the secret service the fbi none of them i don't and i have a very very close friend uh, that is in Secret Service that used to guard one of our presidents and who uh, is a field office member now. And, and I, I, I am extremely suspicious of all of this. But let's uh, do this. Coming up next, we're going to take your call. I'm going to play more audio of uh, witnesses coming up next. And then we have one line open at 866-90-RED-EYE, 866-907-3339 in a special live Sunday morning edition of Red Eye Radio Across America. It's Chris Crock in for Eric and Gary. This morning's USDA Farm Report is brought to you by Howes Products. Tested, trusted, guaranteed since 1920. An effort years in the making. Started many years ago when I actually got to work on it myself when I was at USDA with great leaders. Is now ramping up for an upcoming year-long recognition and celebration. It's time for more work. The work that will go into making sure that 2026, people all over the world will recognize the impact of women farmers. Former Agriculture Deputy Secretary Krista Hardin and the current Deputy Secretary Sochil Torres-Small, respectively. 
at a recent kickoff event at USDA headquarters for International Year of the Women Farmer event planning. The United Nations resolution was approved in May, presented by Deputy Secretary Toria Small and U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Linda Thomas-Greenfield. All the women in the world, in the global labor force, two-fifths work in agri-food systems. In many regions, that number is even higher. I'm Rod Bain reporting for the U.S. Department of Agriculture in Washington, D.C. This report brought to you by Cenex Fuels and Loops. Lines open for your calls. 866-90-RED-EYE on Red Eye Radio. So they didn't really need me, so I kind of helped carry them down initially out of the bleachers. Um, yeah, I mean, there wasn't, there wasn't, the man that got hit, there was no assistance that needed to be given. And unfortunately, his family witnessed the whole thing. They, it seemed like he had several family members in the bleacher with him. And they were quite upset. They didn't know, they were in shock. They didn't know, quite know what's going on. But the man was definitely killed instantaneously. Could you tell us sort of how many family members or people who knew him were, were with him? I and and what, what was their reaction? I thought there was five people. They were, two of them are relatively hysterical. So, but they were, you know, when we took the man out of the bleachers, he went to the tent. There was an aid tent or some type of tent behind the bleachers where they took the body and they immediately evacuated the family with them. And the two out of the five, it seemed, you know, in shock, hysterical, like they were still trying to process what was going on. Joseph, from from where I was standing, we we heard the shots. Uh, We saw the president go down. I saw President Trump get hit. Yeah. What, what, can you tell us what, what seemed, details you remember? Not, it seemed like his head was off to the side, and it seemed like he got nicked in the ear. Was that before the Secret Service took him down to the ground, covered him? Right before the Secret Service. I mean, it was maybe, again, it's hard to tell, like, you know, time dilates when, like, it seemed like it was a second or two. Like, that first seven shots that went off, the man got hit. He was killed almost instantly. The woman in the bleachers, she got injured, like, she got hit in the forearm and the hand. And then in those rounds that were fired, again, I was videoing the event, so that's when I saw Trump get hit. And it seemed to me like looking at, he was looking to the side and the round grazed his ear. So. Could you tell the, the gentleman that that was hit in the head what what uh, angle he was in relation to the former president, like which direction the bullets were, were coming from and to? So it looked like he was facing the president at the very far left portion of the of the bleachers, so he's directly facing it. Again, it seemed to me like the shots were coming from the rear, like behind us. And for me, it seemed like the man was in the way. Like, uh, you know, I I guess... In the way of the former president? No, it seemed like the man was in the way of the shots between whoever was shooting shooting the gun and the president. Um, The man was hit, it seemed like he was in the crossfire. Okay. Um, Let's go right to the phones, and I'll explain that position he was in uh, coming up next after we do a quick pause in a little bit. But first, I'm going to go to Henry in Las Vegas. Henry, you're on Red Eye Radio. Hello, Henry. Yes, uh, good morning. Thank you for taking my call. I think one of the things that we, the people, are forgetting is the words from Nancy Pelosi when she said, and I quote, he will never be president again, yep. end of quote. What did she mean by that statement? And it's time for the pathetic Republican Congress to do a better job than what they have been doing, which is absolutely a disgrace, nothing. It's an embarrassment. Because it is clear to me and to other people that have the initiative of insight in 42, this was an assassination attempt, but they did not want to carry out the assassination. If they had taken the president, the 45th president, he would have lost his life yesterday. Can you imagine civil unrest? That no, would I be sweeping this nation. No, I could not, brother. I got to roll. But what a great call! Uh, it was an assassination attempt. It was two millimeters away from killing our for our uh, our former president and hopefully our next president. We got one line open: eight six six ninety red eye. Chris Crock in for Eric and Gary. More audio, more explanations of what happened, and more of your calls next. Red 
Sky Radio from the Uniden America Studios. Now for Gary McNamara and Eric Harley, Chris Kroc. If you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Oh. All right, let me play. Well, then, a little, let me be, uh, let, wanna... stop. Let me play a little bit more. Uh, by the way, fake news CNN reporting right now that uh, witness told the uh, fake news CNN that a gunman, the gunman, was allowed to climb up on from rooftop to rooftop. That report supposedly came from the Politico, which I will uh, pull up right now and, and glance at because that's breaking news. In fact. Uh, if it's true, and I'm going there right now, and I'll take a quick look here. Um, by the way, Trump's raised fist, their headline says, will make history and define his candidacy. I mean, the man looks like freaking Rocky Balboa. I'll tell you that right now, my friends. So he was allowed to bounce from rooftop to rooftop, the terrorist was, to make sure he could finish the job. Why in God's name was that allowed? Sure sounds like an inside job to me. But the rhetoric of the Democrats certainly has helped keep uh, a positive tone, right? Like these, let's listen to these quotes. If you were in high school, I'd take you behind the gym and beat the hell out of them. No, I wish you were in high school, I could take him behind the gym. I will go and take Trump out tonight. Take him out now. Okay. When was the last time an actor assassinated a president? They're still going to have to go out and put a bullet in Donald Trump. Show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful. awful lot about blowing up the White House. Please, get up in the face of some Congress people. People will do what they do. I want to tell you, Lord Dutch, I want to tell you, Kavanaugh, you have released the whirlwind, and you will pay the price. We're going to go in there, we're going to... Hey! This is just a warning to you Trumpers. Be careful. Walk lightly. And for those of you who are soldiers, make them pay. If you had to be stuck in an elevator with either President Trump, Mike Pence, or Jeff Sessions, who would it be? Does one of us have to come out alive? (laughs) (laughs) Cackling Kamala! (laughs) Sounds like friendship rhetoric, uh, not violent rhetoric. The Democrats are peaceful people. They don't wish uh, Trump to be executed, do they? Well, let's look at this, too. Fake news, fake NB, fake news, M- NBC News, fake news, uh, had this headline not too long ago. Tucker Carlson stokes conspiracies, claims the U.S. is speeding towards assassination of Trump. The comments presented without evidence have been, uh, let's see here, uh, have been picked up by other media personalities, including Alex Jones, uh, Dan Bongino, etc. Well, guess what? It happened. Let's take your calls on Red Eye Radio. It's a special Sunday morning edition after the attempted assassination of President Donald J. Trump, who comes out a winner and stronger than ever. Unfortunately, the terrorist uh, that tried to kill Trump did kill uh, one man instantaneously, blew a massive hole in his head uh, that uh, was so bad his head pretty much was gone, according to one witness, and they covered it with a towel as they carried him out, uh, sadly. And then uh, two others are critically wounded. Uh, pray for them and uh, pray for uh, President Trump to come out stronger than ever and to win uh, this November. It's so more. It's so dang important. Thank God he's alive. All right, let's go to Tommy in Texas. Tommy, you're on Red Eye Radio. Yeah, good. Uh, okay, um, a few months ago, uh, Biden was standing with a CIA agent, and a comment was made. I think there was another senator with them. A comment was made. They were looking at President Kennedy, our late President Kennedy. And they and he says, yeah, this can happen again. And the CIA agent was making that, that comment to him. This can happen again, meaning that they may have to take him out. Nothing so, surprises me from what we're hearing. Yeah, and, yeah uh, I, I need to look into that. And, and another thing Trump's right about the, 
the border. Years ago, there was a gang. They called themselves the Brady Bunch, and I picked two of them up because in my day, we used to hitchhike. This was in the 70s. And so I said, yeah, get in. He said he knew me, pulled a knife on me, made me go get his buddy, I thought. And they had tattooed on their hand. They called themselves the Brady Bunch. They were from Nicaragua. It was a whole family. And all they did was murder people. And yeah, they got them in the yeah. 80s. Yeah, they, they, had, they had killed 22 gas station attendants and shot them in the back of the head. And I, before that, they were throwing them in a bow. And I was supposed to be one. But I was going down navigation, and I said, look. And they looked the other way, and I cut the car off. They didn't know nothing about a standard. I jumped out of the car and got a spud bar, and I started beating the car in them up. And they ran off. But I had speeding tickets, and the manager wanted to call the cops. I said, no, no, I've got speeding tickets. Let them go. So I, I got to roll. If I didn't know that about him, I didn't want, I didn't want to yeah. sell for the speeding tickets. I appreciate I your that. call, my friend. Thank you very much for calling Red Eye Radio. Let's go now to Steve on Long Island, New York. You're on Red Eye Radio. Hello, Steve. Steve in Long Island going... No, I've never heard you. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm here. Hello. Yes, I'm still waiting for you. I'm waiting for you to just start going. Talk, go. Oh, okay. Um, I think there should be a correlation drawn between what happened in Mar-a-Lago, where it seemed like they wanted to take him out then, but of course he wasn't there, and today. I think they should look at... um, the agents that did the raid at Mar-a-Lago, they should really examine the Mar-a-Lago raid and try to draw a car. Like I said, I, th- I think this supports uh, what people thought when the uh, raid at Mar-a-Lago happened, that they were there to take out Trump. And today, uh, or, or yesterday now, uh, it, it just gives credence to the theory that there is a, uh, a plot to take out Trump. Well, uh, I'll tell you what. I'll tell body. you what. Yeah, I, I, I don't think you're too far off, perhaps, on a plot. But uh, what I do know is this. The terrorist, uh, now according to fake news CNN, is, was allowed to crawl from rooftop to rooftop. Uh, why was he allowed to get on that roof that had a perfect 300, 300 to 400 foot, according to CNN, CNN, a 300 to 400 foot straight shot from right above the president looking straight down to kill him. It's um, it's as if they let it, wanted to let it happen. I don't trust the Secret Service. I don't trust the FBI. I sure as hell don't trust uh, Merrick Garland, the head of the DHS, who who reportedly denied multiple requests, according to, uh, to uh, Fox News. I got it right here. I'm holding it up. I, I'm on Facebook Live. You can watch me right now uh, for the remainder of the show. I've been on it. Uh, at Chris Crock Show, C H R I S K R O K. Follow me on Facebook at Chris Crock Show. Click on the public figure. Click like. Scroll down. Share away. Also um, on Twitter, same handle at Chris Crock Show and Instagram. Uh, every piece of audio and every fact I'm sharing with you, a lot of it's right there on my Twitter feed tonight. But the headline from Fox News says Mayorkas denied repeated requests for more Secret Service protection for Trump. A uh, GOP lawmaker, Mike Waltz, Republican from Florida, says uh, this this morning. Let's go to. Uh, Indiana. No, actually, we're going to go before Indiana. We're going to Tim in Cincinnati. Tim, you're on Red Eye Radio. Uh, Good morning, Chris. Uh, First of all, I want to thank you and the Red Eye crew for doing a live thing. I've waited all night to hear live stuff about what's going on. Uh, The point that I tried to make when I called in was uh, if, if you look, those Secret Service agents, the women, they're about four foot tall. They didn't even come up to Trump's chest, and that he was a perfect target for anybody who yes. wanted to give him another hit. I, I was noticing that. What the hell? I can't. The, the man's towering above them, and and well, that's because the uh, Joe Biden handpicked the new Secret Service director, Kimberly Cheadle. She was his Secret Service uh, guard during when he was VP, and she, her, she, her first big thing she promised to do was to uh, get thirty percent female hires. Um, I don't care if you're female or not, but if you're not if you're not qualified, you shouldn't be there. That's DEI, DEI, and I bet you that's why. Or is is either a conspiracy to kill the president, or it was DEI of stupidity, fools that shouldn't be in there because they're not qualified. Good Biden hires. Uh, it's what your sex is and what your race is and what your sexual preference is. That's the re- number one, and and uh, that kind of DEI crap leads to the Sam Brintons of the world stealing stealing women's luggage, being in charge of protecting us. God help our president, and God help this uh, 
for godforsaken, pathetic Secret Service and this Biden administration at all. Let's go to boom, boom, boom. Who else we got next? We got uh, Dennis in Mobile, Alabama. Hello, Dennis. You're on Red Eye Radio. Hey, good morning. Uh, two quick points. Number one, the Secret Service failed. You know, you're talking 150 yards, which is a clap shot with an AR-15. The Marine Corps trains out to 500 yards with the same cartridge. And that, and that was exactly space. right, though. It was 350, uh, 300 to 400 feet, uh, 150 yards, clear view of sight on a roof yeah. looking at him. It was they, This was allowed. It's, and that the, the, the one good thing is that guy is not that good of a shot. They have missed. But he was an incredibly he, he, he was an incredibly good shot. I'm going to tell you why. It was kinetic, obviously. Trump moved. He, he turned his head, and he was. This guy was literally. If you look at the trajectory, he literally would have hit Trump he right. Didn't move it. He, right. I'm telling. Yes, he did. Watch the video. He moved. Didn't move that far, though. I'm gonna, here's yeah. what happened. Just listen to me. He turned his head to the left. The gun shooter was at the left of him at 9:30, 10 o'clock, and it came perfectly over to get him right as he was looking straight right in the head, just just uh, slightly above his eye on the side of his head. And he turned it, and that's when it went um, to the piercing the ears. Like, we're actually right at his eye, uh, pierced the ear. That, that would yeah, have, if have he had time. been, the, be, dude, he was two, literally two millimeters away from killing our president. Yeah, two millimeters. Just, you're t- you're going to tell me he's a bad shot, and he's two millimeters that. off from murdering the president perfectly? That's yeah. not a bad shot. Yeah. That, that many shots, and he you know, only, only one, of, maybe that second one, if he hit him in the vest, maybe. I, I couldn't tell for sure. Yeah, it looks, it looks is, like there was a hole in the all vest. These Go ahead. People, all these people that are inciting violence, all McCaskill and all of them, going Biden. back to that Kathy Griffin witch, Yep, they need to go to jail for incitement of violence. No, that's fr- freedom of speech. Anyone, is, it's, it's inciting violence. It's, it's iffy. Um, a lot of this is encouraging to, that, to Trump to be killed. But it, there's a level of, uh, especially with a public figure, that uh, it's it's got to be it, civil. It, it should not be allowed. Period. Well, okay, we but then you're going to allow that. And then just, the I, other point is, if they, anybody that calls him a fascist or Hitler, he should sue them civilly for slander and libel. No, that's not going to happen. The clear fact that look, I've been briefed by uh, attorneys for broadcast law, and um, this is about me as a public figure, and Trump's even more, way more than a public figure than me. It is next to impossible to win any kind of a lawsuit against somebody unless they say something that's definitively, demonstrably false, like so and so is gay if they're not gay. So and so has AIDS if they don't have AIDS. You know, stuff like that. It's gonna be strict straight definitive. So and so stole such and such amount from this place, um, and it's not true. Stuff like that, definitive, simple, uh demonstratively uh, false things. If you can't prove it like that, and it has to be malicious and everything. For a public figure, the bar is so high, it's literally almost useless to do it. So no and no on that. appreciate your call, though. Next, we're going to get into, we have Jim in Indiana uh, with some great uh, story uh, con- uh, uh, comments about the rooftop being open. And then Ed in Rhode Island um, on the Secret Service, what the hell was going on there. That's coming up next. Chris Crock in for Eric and Gary on Red Eye Radio, special edition after the attempted assassination of President Donald J. Trump. Get in touch with Red Eye Radio, toll free at 866-90-RED-EYE. I'm glad that man's okay. Long live Trump. Let's go, baby. Trump 2024. Denver, let's hear That is UFC fighter Evan Elder. Now let's go to Jim in Indiana. You're on Red Eye Radio. Good morning, Chris. How you doing? Good, thanks. Go. Yeah, thanks uh, Thanks for taking my call. Just wondering if you could uh, uh, lay out for your listeners and myself the... Uh, the area that's immediately surrounding the grounds where this incident occurred. Uh, maybe uh, you are privy to some aerial photography detailing some of the buildings around the area. Was this one of the ideal spots that he could have chosen? Yeah, it was. Just it, hit the lottery and- yeah. No, he was climbing rooftop to rooftop, according to the, the reports tonight, uh, from a witness on fake news CNN. And um, the, he was about, he was at 9.30 to 10 o'clock 
on Trump's left, 9.30, 10 o'clock position, perfectly aligned on that rooftop, uh, 300 to 400 feet away. It was a disgusting aberration. Uh, quickly, Ed, in Rhode Island, you got 20 seconds. Go. Yeah, I think they're weaponized. Uh, there's someone in the Secret Service. When they go to Washington, they have they go out to a nightclub and drink and whatever with the uh, FBI, uh, the other uh, law enforcement. I was up. At- Whoa, sorry, we lost you there. I apologize, brother. Thank you for your call, though. I'm sorry about that. All right, follow me on Twitter, at Chris Croc Show. Everything I played for you tonight is available at Chris Croc Show. And you can listen to me and uh, on Red Eye Radio affiliate, WBAP at WBAP.com. RedEyeRadioShow.net for all shows, including tonight's. God bless America. See you next time. This is Red Eye Radio on Westwood One.